It's hard to believe it, but it's only been about a week since Kamala Harris made Donald Trump really wish that he had stayed home that night. That's why I think it's worth revisiting this great article from the Copper Courier outlining 13 of the wildest lies Trump told during the debate with Kamala. Number one was the immigrants are eating household pets in Ohio, which if you've been paying attention, then the woman that kind of started this whole thing has come out and said that they found her cat in her attic. Trump has nothing to do with Project 2025. <laughs> That's a good one. Harris doesn't have a plan for her presidency. Trump said, my plan is a brilliant plan. It's a great plan. Harris doesn't have a plan. I have concepts of a plan. But I'm not president right now. You know who else isn't president right now? Kamala Harris. That's why your talking point of why hasn't she fixed everything? She's in charge right now. Really isn't that smart. Number four. Democrats want to sanction the murder of newborn babies. <sighs> Number five was my personal favorite. Everyone wanted Roe v. Wade to be overturned. Trump said for 52 years they've been trying to get Roe v. Wade into the states. And through the genius and heart and strength of six Supreme Court justices, three of which were appointed by a domestic terrorist, uh, we were able to do that. Every legal scholar, every Democrat, every Republican, liberal, conservative, they all wanted this issue to be brought back to the states. No, we didn't. I've yet to hear somebody explain to me in a rational way that makes sense why we should have removed federal protections for women and kicked it back to the states. Like, that's literally one of the most asinine things I've ever heard. Americans are voting on their reproductive rights. He said the states are now voting on abortion rights. Yeah, 22 states now ban abortion or restrict their procedure earlier in pregnancy than the standard set by Roe. So, well done. Number seven, Trump had nothing to do with the January 6th insurrection. Moving on. Number eight, he claimed violent crimes are on the rise in the United States. The only problem is, is that if you go look at the data collected by the FBI, that doesn't really back up his claim. Number nine, the Trump administration did a phenomenal job handling COVID-19. <laughs> Trump said, we did a phenomenal job with the pandemic. I would argue that hundreds of thousands of people would, might still be alive had you done a phenomenal job. But hey, semantics, I'm sure. Immigrants are taking over the country. Yeah, Trump rambled on about that. But let me tell you, I live about an hour from the southern border. And while I'm not saying there aren't issues down there, they sure as heck aren't as bad as Donald Trump and the MAGA people want you to think. Number 11 was every legal proceeding against Trump is a fake case. Trump said every one of those civil and criminal cases filed against me were started by Democrats against their political opponent. And I'm winning most of them. And I'll win the rest on appeal. It's called weaponization. They weaponized the the U.S. Justice Department. They used it to try and win an election. They're fake cases. No, they're not fake cases, and you've lost several of them. Like, you've lost 60 cases of your, your you know, stolen election nonsense. Uh, you've lost your two cases against uh, E. Jean Carroll. Uh, you lost your case against uh, Sandy or Stormy Daniels. Um, you are a 34-time convicted felon. Uh, yeah, no, it's not looking good. The problem is, is that Donald Trump's actually a criminal. That's why these things are happening to him. Nobody's after him for any other reason except for he's a criminal. Number 12 was Trump claiming that the Biden-Harris administration hadn't created any new jobs, that they all were created under him and because of COVID and they know it and we know it and his normal nonsense. And finally, the one that most of you will probably enjoy the most, number 13, Trump has the biggest rallies in the history of American politics. So while Donald Trump and his camp work feverishly to try to distance themselves from his debate uh, performance, we need to not let that happen. We're only 40-something days out, so it's not that much longer. Let's make sure that this stays fresh in people's minds. This man is off his rocker. He is senile. He is a criminal. There's no way he should be anywhere near our White House and have that kind of power again. If we give him the White House, he is going to make all of this go away. We can't let that happen. It's time to get serious and set the precedent in America that it doesn't matter who you are. If you're a criminal, you go to jail.